Today is Songkran, the Thai New Year. It's the time when people come to give blessings and to receive blessings as a way of starting the new year. At the same time, we dedicate merit, we make merit, and we dedicate it to those who passed away. In other words, we look to the past, make merit for those we've loved in the past who are gone. We look to the future. We hope to have a good future, which is why we, we give blessings and ask for blessings. If you simply take blessings, you're living off your, own, your old treasures. You want new treasures, and you do that by giving blessings to others. The monks have a blessing that you hear again and again. It ends with ayu wana sukha pala. Ayu means long life. Wana means beauty. Sukha means happiness. Pala means strength. Those are the blessings that we, the monks give regularly. But you have to stop and think about them. You know, suppose you had all four of those things. You had a long life. But as you got older and older, you got sick, you got deluded. It wouldn't be a good, actually a good blessing. It turns into a curse if you get deluded. That's the same with beauty. If you get deluded about your beauty, then that turn, turns into a curse. There are people who will try to take advantage of your beauty. They want your beauty. They try to take advantage of you by praising your beauty. You fall for that. So beauty on its own is not necessarily a blessing. Sukha, you live a life of happiness, you have no pains, you have no troubles, and you become careless, you become complacent. And as for strength, if you get a lot of strength and you use it to force other people to do what you want, good or bad, again, that becomes your bad karma. These blessings can turn into a curse as long as you don't have the wisdom to use them properly, which is why you don't want to be deluded about these things. So if you really want a good blessing, you want to have the blessing of wisdom as well. So you can use your long life to continue making, making good, doing good in this life. We have this human birth. We don't know how much longer it's going to last, but if it does last a long time, you want to keep on using it for that purpose, not just get lazy as you get older. Even as the body gets weak, you can still do many, many things with your mind. And even if your mind begins to go a little bit, you can develop thoughts of goodwill. You can try to focus your mind as much as you can. You can do a lot of good. There was a story years back. Ajahn Mahabua had some students who came to see him. There's a woman who had cancer. And before she died, she wanted to come and spend some time at the monastery to get her mind into shape. And he said, well, I can look after your mind, but you're going to need a doctor to look after your body. So she had a friend, an older woman, 80 years old, who had been a doctor. So the friend came along. They stayed with him for three months. Every night, almost, he gave a Dharma talk. They recorded the Dharma talks. Back in those days, it was cassette tapes. And then at the end of 90 days, they went back to Bangkok. The woman with cancer lived for another six months. And then the doctor found all of a sudden she had this pile of tapes. So she came up with the idea that it would be good to transcribe and to make into Dharma books. But she was concerned. She was old herself. Her eyesight was going. She wasn't strong. She was afraid she wouldn't be able to complete the task. But Ajahn Mahabhu encouraged her. He said, you've got this body. See how much goodness you can squeeze out of it before you have to throw it away. So the woman took heart from that, and she was able to transcribe all 90 of the Dharma talks. Now, as a result, we have two large books of very good Dharma talks. That was somebody in her 80s. So just because you're old doesn't mean you can't do good. There are lots of ways you tend to focus on the things you can't do as you get older. But try to think about the goodness that you can do. Focus on that. And that way your long life becomes a blessing. The same principle applies to beauty, strength, and happiness. You can use these things for a good purpose, and then they become a blessing. It's up to you to have the wisdom to use them properly. The same holds for our wealth. Often we want to have a life of wealth without any, any lack. But if all your needs are met, you tend to get stupid, you tend to get lazy. So you ask yourself, what would be the best use of this wealth? You can turn it into a perfection. You can turn it into perfection of generosity. You can turn it into per perfection of de dedication. You want to use your wealth for a really good purpose. And that way these things do become blessings because you have the wisdom to use them properly. At the same time, you could think about long life, beauty, happiness, strength, in terms of inner qualities as well. The Buddha says when you practice meditation, that lengthens the life of your mind. 
It gives you more strength. It gives you more happiness. As for beauty of the mind, that's the Buddha says is a quality of your, your virtue. This is one of the reasons why whenever we have a ceremony like this, we always take the five precepts to remind you that this is where genuine beauty lies. As you get older, you start dressing up, putting on makeup, trying to look like you did when you were young, and it gets less and less appropriate. But the beauty of virtue never gets old, it never gets out of place, never seems wrong, never seems inappropriate. So that's the kind of beauty you want, the beauty that you have to find inside. The strength inside, of course, would be strength of conviction, that your actions really do make a difference in life, so you want to be careful about what you do. Persistence, when you stick with the principle that you want to do what's only skillful, you want to abandon anything that's unskillful. The strength of mindfulness, when you keep in mind what is right and what is wrong. Not only while you're here at the monastery, but as you go through life. Concentration, when you focus on what is really important in your life. Give that top priority. And then the discernment to see which ways you're causing unnecessary suffering and how you can stop. This kind of, these kinds of strengths are the things that will carry you through. And make sure that whatever other blessings you gain in life do stay as blessings and don't become curses. So think about taking the blessing of wanting mindfulness and discernment so you can use all your other blessings well. And when you're giving blessings to other people, think about your own behavior as a blessing. When you open your mouth, what kind of things are you saying? Are these things that will harm other people or will they help them? Or are they just worthless? So much of our speech it was just thrown away. We have these human mouths, and as John Lee used to say, bow down to your mouth every day. In other words, use it well. You went to all this trouble to become a human being with a human mouth, well use that human mouth well as part of your way of developing even more blessings for yourself and giving blessings to others so that your words will be worth listening to, worth cherishing, words that will really help other people to see what's to their true benefit as well. In this way we give blessings and receive blessings, and that is what establishes us in a good year. And the monks are happy to chant blessings for you, but that kind of thing washes off very quickly. But the blessings you do through your own actions, those things stay with you, not only for this year but for a long time to come.